everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. We're talking Swarf again. To my surprise, the last talking Swarf about machine tool suppliers was one of the most liked videos that I've made yet. So that was surprising to me, but pretty cool. I didn't know if people would want to see me sit here in an Adirondack chair talking, but apparently they liked it. So we're going to do another one. And this one is going to be focused on you, the viewers. And this is my appreciation for you and some of the appreciation that we have received from the viewers. So all of my videos are not scripted. They're not rehearsed. I just start the camera with my remote and we roll. I figure... If you know the content enough to teach it to somebody or to do an informational video, you should be able to do it cold turkey. Today, I got a little script here. Uh, and these are some of the comments and things that we have been able to help viewers uh, through the channel, which is really cool. So when I started the channel, we had three goals. One, have fun. If I wasn't having fun, I really had no interest in doing this. I'm having fun. So goal one, achieved. Goal two, help people. I had a lot of help from various people in my life, throughout my life, in getting to where I am today. And I want to pay that forward. This information that I'm providing is very hard to find. And when you do find it, it's hard to understand. It's not presented well. So that, that was, you know, goal number two. Goal number three, advertising. Try to get the name of the company out there, generate some leads. As of this video, we have achieved all three goals. We're having fun, we're helping people, and we generated some leads, and we generated some business. So thank you. This would not work without people watching it. Okay? So, with that said, Let's appreciate our viewers and see what they're doing. Our very first viewer interaction was with a viewer uh, named Shem, and he requested a video. So he has a Fidel, and he wanted some more information on how to use one of the Fidel-specific commands. So that video is in this card, and we were able to help him out. I had a very nice email exchange with him. I still talk to him on occasion. Uh, very nice person to talk to. So we helped uh, Shem out very first. Another viewer, and this viewer has probably applied the most stuff covered in the channel into his small operation. I, I think it's a small operation from, from what I've seen on his videos. His username is called GGG Tech 75. And I'm going to put a card to this video here, and then here's a clip from his video. Oh, and there it is. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, so he had the uh, 100 subscribers, and uh, his 100 subscriber um, he couldn't get a hold of. I was one of the early subscribers. I think he said I was 31 or somewhere around there. And I spoke up and asked if I can have it. And uh, I got it, which is great. I'm really excited. So we sent Gabe the 100 subscriber plaque. Thank you, Gabe. And what Gabe was able to do is he built one of the oil skimmers, if you watch his video that, uh, that I showed a couple of videos ago. He also made a lot of the post-processor mods. So, you know, he was able to directly apply a lot of the information that we gave uh, in these videos. So that's really cool. So, you know, he's using the information practically in his shop. So thank you Gabe. I hope you enjoy the plaque. If you do mount it to your machine, uh, make sure it doesn't fall off and hit you in the head. It's a pretty good chunk of aluminum. No concussions. We are also international. So give you some demographics. About 50% of our views come from the continental United States. The rest come from all over the world. Canada, UK, Germany, uh, Australia, 
Um, New Zealand. So, you know, from viewers all over the world, people are watching this content, which, which is awesome. I, had, I didn't even think about that when I started making this, that we're, we're talking to people all over the world. So, Carlo from Belgium, he built his own mill, his own CNC mill. That's awesome. That's really cool. You know, it is not easy to build your own CNC mill. He spent the time and did it. Uh, here is a card to his video of, of his mill. And he had some questions and would like some more documentation that I had on the Fusion 360 post processor because he needed to write a custom post for his mill. So, you know, thank you, Carlo. And that is an awesome mill. You know, keep up the good work. Uh, the next viewer, Kevin, he looked at our thread milling video. So our thread milling video has really helped a lot of people out. Um, I've received comments from seasoned machinists that said, hey, you know, I've done this my whole life. I never really understood the math behind it. I just did what I was told. And that is really cool because, you know, here we've got people that have been machining for a long time and they machine great parts and the parts come out in tolerance but now they have the math in their head of why they come out in tolerance and that's what I like to do I like to answer the question of why I don't want to skim over a topic and tell you do it just because I want to give you the background the why the 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 nitty-gritty information of each topic so what Kevin did is he watched the video he took the calculations and he made the community a spreadsheet. So I linked Kevin's spreadsheet in the video description for the thread milling video now. So if you go to that video description, you can uh, access Kevin's shared spreadsheet and then you can use it to simplify the uh, thread calculations um, based on your needs. Then we come to Brian. So Brian contacted me and asked for, for, for some help on the post processor. And then Brian went to IMTS this year. I tried to go to IMTS. I just couldn't make it work. Uh, I had a lot of uh, professional work obligations, obligations here, family obligations. I was not able to attend. Brian was able to talk to somebody at Autodesk, specifically from HSM Works, and got some information on the post processors. So if you go into Fusion 360, and you look at their list of generic post processors that ship with Fusion 360, there is a post processor called dump.cps. And I completely overlooked it. I didn't even see it was sitting there. But what that post processor does is if you run that, it will dump every single parameter that is in the post processor back end. So you can see all the parameter names. And we've been struggling with trying to find these parameter names in, in documentation. And here they are self-documenting uh, all along. So thank you, for, thank you to Brian for you know, talking to Autodesk and then also forwarding that information to us so that we can share it with the community. So there's going to be some more post-processor videos coming up. Um, I've got a whole bunch of videos in the queue that have been suggested. So it might be a little bit. But I want to go over that, that dump pro, uh, post processor because that one's really cool. Uh, the next user, and I apologize if I get the name wrong, I think it's pronounced Hoos. And he had some issues uh, with lathe threading. So he has a Tormach Slant 15, I think it's the SL15, and he's using Pathpilot. And he sent me this, this first picture here and then he sent me this next picture here and he's trying to cut threads on his lathe and he used Pathpilot's conversational programming and he can cut good threads he uses Fusion 360 postcode and it comes out looking uh, like the last photo so he reached out to us and, at, and said hey can you help me out real quick and we took a quick look and, you know, it was an infeed problem. So there's an infeed angle in Fusion 360, and that infeed angle uh, was not set. So we got the infeed angle working for him, and then he was able to generate these parts. So now he's generating some nice-looking parts. 
And then he also did something really neat, and I didn't even think about this myself, um, just because I don't, have a, I don't have a lathe here, I just have a small little bench top lathe behind me that I do really tiny parts on. But he was able to take the thread milling video calculations, and from the thread uh, milling calculations, he applied those to single point lathe threading. And if you think about it, at, at the base level, it's the exact same stuff. The single point threading insert is identical between a thread mill and a single point lathe insert, and all the geometry is exactly the same, so why wouldn't the calculations work for lathe threading? Uh, so he made this spreadsheet here, he sent me a picture of it, so this is his spreadsheet that he made uh, to help him calculate the numbers, and he's now making uh, successful parts. So that, that was cool, that was a very cool user interaction, direct, you know, results. Hey, I'm having trouble making parts, and we were able to, you know, exchange a couple of emails, took a couple of minutes, not a big deal, and we were able to get some good parts. Uh, we did some post-processor mods uh, for a viewer. So I wasn't planning on getting into the uh, post-processor mod business, um, but I was contacted by a viewer, and he said, hey, your videos are great, I love them, and I would like to utilize your post-processor stuff. I also have some changes that I need made for my post-processor for my machine. There's some features on my machine that I'd like to utilize that aren't being utilized because the post-processor won't support them. Can you help me? And I said, yeah, it's going to take some time to do that, though. And, uh, you know, we agreed on some stuff, and we were able to uh, make some post-processor mods for him. And you know, get him up and running, and then add in all the goodies that our videos covered. So if you have a post-processor, and you do not want to mod it yourself, or you don't have the time, or you don't want to learn it, uh, that's fine. If you contact me, uh, we could probably work something out uh, where, you know, I might be able to modify your post-processor for you. Uh, I'm not doing that service um, for free, but I'm not charging an arm and a leg either. Um, you know, I'm basically just charging, you know, what my time is to, to do the mods, and it doesn't take very much time to do them, you know, most mods are uh, less than an hour, if it's a little bit more involved, or I've got to change multiple sections, you know, two, three hours most, so it's, it's not that expensive to do, so if you're interested in that, you know, please contact me, we were able to help this viewer out, and we got uh, his post-processor mods done. We had another viewer that uh, asked if I could call him, and talk to him about some Fidel machines. So he was looking at a Fidel machine, wanted a little bit more background on my experience and what I ran into, and specifically what he should be looking for while looking at a Fidel. Um, so we had about a 30-minute phone conversation. Uh, it was enjoyable. Uh, Rob, he was a very nice guy, very pleasant to talk to. Um, so, so that was awesome. So it's extending now beyond just videos and emails. Um, but we're having some phone conversations with some viewers. So, uh, last one, but, but definitely not least, um, Steve Schuler Solutions. And I'll, I'll give him a plug here on this card, and I'm going to quote what he said in his email, and I, and I asked him ahead of time if I could do this. He writes, Thank you again for sharing so much of your knowledge with me and others. You're welcome, Steve. I appreciate the comment. For me, your channel is the most interesting and informative channel I've ever seen. The way the info is presented is second to none, in my opinion. Well, that, that you know, blew me over the top. That was really cool. Um, it might be a little overstated. I, I don't know if I'm the most informative and second to none, but hey, I'll take it. You know, that's pretty cool. So we'll, we'll give Steve a plug uh, for his nice comments. And uh, then Steve suggested uh, a bunch of content uh, to make that we haven't made yet. Some of it uh, I'm definitely going to get on the list and do. Uh, some of it I may not be able to do because I don't have the hardware to show you to do that yet. So that leads on to uh, Steve's comment. And I've also gotten... Uh, one or two other people that said this, and, and they said, start a Patreon page. Now, I haven't started a Patreon page 
just because I'm a small channel and I didn't want to just start out, you know, asking for money. I'm not the type of person that, you know, goes out and just tries to ask for money. But, you know, a couple of people have contacted me and said, hey, you've really helped me out. Your videos are very informative. I'd like to support the channel in some way. Um, so I think I'm going to start a Patreon page. Let me know what you guys think. Is that a good idea? You know, I know other people have Patreon pages out there. Um, I, I'm just a little, you know, donation kind of thing. You know, I'm not a donation type of person. But if the content is really, truly helping you, and it's helping you, you know, monetarily, and you feel like, you know, you want to help the channel monetarily, you know, I'll start a Patreon page, and, and that's how we can accomplish that. So what would we use the funds uh, from Patreon for? Well, we use the funds to cover, you know, the YouTube channel. So I've got pretty good video and photographic equipment. Uh, I had that previously. Uh, I like to do photo and video as a kind of a side hobby as well. So that's why I've got the cameras and stuff. I don't have a very good microphone and, and that shows in the channel. So that's one of the things that I've been trying to think um, to get. I've got some other priorities though. There's, a, there's a, still a chunk of change that we've got to sink into this machine. So stuff for the YouTube channel is kind of falling off to the side because you know my number one priority is keeping the machine running. So you know money from Patreon can be you know applied towards helping with equipment to make this channel the time involved in making the channel, um, some of the materials that we use on some of the examples and demonstrations that I've done on the channel, uh, maybe some tooling, you know, we can buy some tooling and show off some, some better tooling and some other tooling. So there, there's a lot of things that those funds uh, could be applied for that would be in direct benefit um, to the channel. So in closing, I just want to thank everybody there out there for, for watching the channel and we're growing, we're we're just shy of 300 subscribers and we literally made that 100 subscriber button like a month and a half ago. So, I mean, it's really cool watching the exponential growth that the channel is currently, uh, um, you know, experiencing. It's really cool. So leave your comments, you know, like it or dislike it. Let me know what you think about the Patreon page. You know, I appreciate it. And, uh, Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.